Welcome back. We are still in Revelation chapter 13, and we are looking at the second beast that came up out of the earth, and we'll read from Revelation 13 verse 13. He did astonishing or great wondrous signs, even making fire flash down to earth from the sky or heaven while everyone was watching. So here we see that his startling wonders or signs as it's, it's called are part of his deception. The Greek word for the signs here is simeon, which means a sign which is typically miraculous. It means a sign that is given especially to confirm, corroborate or authenticate. A sign that emphasizes the end purpose of that sign, which in turn exalts the one giving it. So accordingly, miraculous signs are used dozens of times in the New Testament as a means to authenticate the Lord Jesus Christ and his eternal purpose, especially by doing what mere man cannot replicate or take credit for. So here we must look at the opposite side, because obviously this is a wicked, evil or wild beast. So here we have the opposite. Here the sign, signs have, has, have the ability to authenticate the first beast's authority. So when we consider that, we must keep the context in mind here. What is the goal of the second beast again? It is to do all in its power to corroborate and affirm the authority and substance of the first beast. And we identified that this second beast mainly uses mainstream media to achieve those aims, with the dragon always, the fiery dragon always in the background. And very re relevant, human capabilities in collaboration with the demonic or occult world in the form of esoteric influences or doing so overtly do have some significant power, including miraculous and supernatural power. So again, these two beasts can eff effectively affect corporate and individual mindsets, but also nature itself. They will do so to the measure they are allowed to influence the spheres wherein they operate in nations and cultures. So we must not consider all discoveries as divine, so even in the literal sense, these signs may include scientific, medical or technical esoteric discoveries, including vaccines that do more harm than good and so-called medical cures, which, which does not venerate or honor God. But also technological breakthroughs, artistic expressions, fashion, even religious practices and supplying quasi-religious experiences can come from them. It can empower those who are used by the beast to manifest these signs, to give momentum to secular humanism, because the enemy always uses man or mankind to achieve his goals. Sadly, some of the strongholds of witchcraft and the cultural norms that have been established over a long period of time in certain societies with their emotional manipulation and peer pressure can be very powerful in the lives of the dwellers in the earth or of, on, on the earth. So the context remains these signs, the ability to conjure up what seems to be miraculous or supernatural and at times can be to promote the first beasts of power and authority is reflected on these seven mountains, government, finance and commerce, religion, education, family, media, and arts and entertainment. And we have stressed again and again that the second beast uses secularized humanism as its foundation. And this is the platform for what it will want to implant in each dweller on the earth, and that is self-actualization without God, God's involvement. The second beast will advocate the world's carnal aims focusing on, as we've said, human rights, entitlements, and desire. And the medium he uses, as we've said, mainstream media. He'll strategically declare to the inhabitants of the earth that it's your inherent right and freedom to choose, to fulfill the desires and lust of your flesh. 
that craving for physical pleasure, whatever it entails. And the lust of your eyes? Of course, you should have ambition, the craving for everything you see and like, but also nourish the, your pride in life. Whatever your achievements are that you've achieved in your own strength, take ungodly pride in your own achievements and possessions. And such indoctrination is driven by dissatisfaction, always moving people on and on and on, and pride and greed, envy and jealousy and selfish ambition. He strongly encourages all of that using the media to speak on his behalf. I mean, you only need to look at marketing, advertising and branding across the board to realize his emphasis on these aspects of self-actualization and self-gratification. And such propaganda has strong allure in the world, strong allure that I must have or a fear of losing out. And what about me, myself and I, why can't I have or enjoy attitudes? He gets people to do the things he advocates, whether knowingly or unknowingly, consciously or subconsciously, actively or passively. But in that way, when people adhere to his propaganda, to his allure, people in the world will not recognize and even worse, deny the Father, the Father's love, Father God's love for them in Christ Jesus our Lord. So it's really important that we understand how this strategy takes people away from what God has for them. Until next time, blessings.